Julia, in your introduction, you had mentioned um, the uh, you know screenplay structure, and um, I wanted to ask, you know, when you were creating this story, uh, you know, the the relationship between the two sisters is very truthful and sort of unique. Um, how did you structure that uh, during the writing, and how do you, so how do you feel that you know? Do you see it as sort of a cruel thing, or a liberatory thing? Uh, not at all. I think it's just a human thing. The the thing is that about the sisters is that during like their first three drafts of the movie, um, they were not sisters. Alexia was just a girl that she had met there that was older and who was hazing her. And there was something I really did not like about this relationship that I was not satisfied with because I thought it was very hectic and uh, it was going all over the place. Um, you know, some kind of meso a sadomasochistic way that I, I could not relate to it at all. And I was thinking, what's the problem with this relationship? Why can't I relate to it? And what's, yeah, what's wrong with it? And all of a sudden, because I, I did not understand, by the way, in this relationship, why Justine would keep on going to her and why the other one would keep on punching her like a punching bag. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I had a click and I realized that if they were sisters, then all this would not be a problem anymore. We would understand if there were sisters, why she keep going to her, because she's going to her blood, you know, she's going to her roots, she's going to her family. And we would understand why the older sister would uh, use her like, uh, like she belonged to her in some way. And so that's why I think like the, the, the sisterhood and brotherhood is a very cinematographic relationship because when you're brothers or sisters, you go from love to hate, from love again to hate again, and you don't need to explain what's in between. You don't need to create stupid scenes that are about like, oh, I did not like the way you talked to me earlier. We have to talk about it. <laughs> no one cares about that. It's really not cinematographic. Everything is really a visual in a sisterhood relationship or in a brotherhood relationship. That's why I chose this one and also, I want to say that in our background, in our cultural background, like I'm talking about founding texts, like the Bible or the Greek myth and stuff like that, the um, brotherhood and or sisterhood are always depicted as very gory relationships. They're always incredibly violent. Like there is something about this too much of love, you know, this fusion that both parties want to aim at again, but it's impossible because they are two different beings. So one of them have to, has to disappear, you know, a bit like Harry Potter and Voldemort, if you wish. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And so in order to structure this, I really thought about uh, a cell that was doing its mitosis. You know, when the cell divides, the, the, the medical um, uh, vocabulary is very important to me because medicine has a very big importance in the way I see the world and in the way I see the bodies. And I thought about this cell that would divide. And when the cell divides, it, there, are, there is a loss. You know, you have some matter that is lost. And if there is a loss, it means that something has been torn apart. And if something has been torn apart, it means that there is pain. There is pain on both sides. And also it means that the two cells that result from this dividing, from this division, sorry about my English, um, the two cells that result from it look very much alike. And yet they are very much different because they are not one cell anymore. And this is really how I try to uh, consider this relationship. And I wanted to ask, I mean, this is sort of just a one-off, um, the music that Justine listens to while she's sort of staring at herself in the mirror, it's not, that's not a real song, right? Oh, it is. It, it is, is definitely oh, a real wow. song. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I, actually, it's, to be honest, it's a band that Garance and I are very fan of. Um, it's, um, it's something that I thought was very relevant uh, when it comes to my movie because yes. it's a very <laughs> hybrid band. It's, big, it's an, a hybrid between rock, uh, sorry, with, between rap and, um, and gothic rock. And um, also it's very important because both of the singers are sisters and because they are very big feminists, you know, they tend to um, take the cliches that you can hear in, um, in rap music and just, they, may, they don't even in, inverse them, invert them. They just make it their own. And they just talk about men the way men talk about women in rap songs. And I think it's incredibly empowering. 
and I really like that. And I really like the fact that they talk about uh, darkness and tombstones and death and all that. That's really, I think this is so mutant music that I thought was very relevant for my movie. I really like them. Yeah. By the way, they are called Orti, O-R-T-I-E-S. Um, and so, you know, this, the, the story and her, you know, the cannibalism is sort of a metaphor for sexual awakening as well. Um, or it, it's intimately tied up, you know, the, their consumption of flesh is sort of intimately tied up with uh, sex. And the roommate, uh, you know, he's gay and he immediately announces himself as gay and he says that, you know, you know, I spent 20 years in the closet, I'm not going to go back now. Why, I guess, why is he still sort of attracted and sort of gets pulled into their orbit? Because it's not just one sister, it's both sisters. Like he's attracted in some, there's something about both of those sisters that he needs to take a part of. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this in two parts. Sure. Um, the first thing is that Adrian, for me, represents the look of the audience on my character. It was important for me that Adrian is, should be the way, uh, should, his eyes should be the way we should look at her. And that's why he's gay, by the way. That's why I did not want his look on her to be sexualized, because I do not want to sexualize her body. You know, she's a sexual being, indeed. She discovers sexuality, indeed. But I personally do not want to sexualize her, to, to impose a, a certain look on her, the way um, that, um, that is, um, that, yeah, the outs, like, yeah, commercials or whatever, you name it, series. And the way they put a look that is on women that is very objectifying and sexualized. So I did not want that. So I, if he had been straight since the beginning, he would have erupted in this room and we, we would have thought, oh, okay, they're gonna fuck. And basically, this is just where this relationship would have been in our heads. Okay, they're gonna fuck and we would have expected this moment to happen. And that would have been incredibly reductive and incred incredibly not interesting at all. Uh, I, wa I really wanted him to be a hero. I really wanted him to uh, bear with him this uh, tolerant look on her and this look of love on her. That was very important for me because I wanted to build up an empathy on my, on my, my character. I did this in many ways in the movie, but we can talk about it later. But her look on her was one of these ways. So after that, the thing is that for me, the, their couple represent an, a form of absolute. I really wanted them to be everything to each other in this context of violence and of humiliation and of cruelty. I really wanted them to rely on each other very much in very different ways. They are at the same time brothers and friends and lovers and they are everything. And there are the, the, those two poets, I always quote them, that are called Montaigne and La Boétie. They are French poets from the 17th century who obviously had a very strong friendship and people think that they were gay and that you do think that they were at a time where it was really not to be admitted. And one of them said about the other, because it was him and because it was me. And that's all. And this is just a sentence, you know. It's just because it was him, because it was me, and I really wanted them to represent this for each other. A form of absolute, uh, beyond determinism and beyond any kind of barrier, social, sexual, or family, familial um, barriers. So that was super important. Um, what was the rest of your question? Um, that he's... Uh, very attracted to both of them. Oh yeah, this I would, this I would, uh, I would um, kind of disagree with you. I do not think that Adrian is attracted to Alexia at all. I think Adrian is a very open-minded person and a very social person. So that's why, like, she's here to hang out. He's gonna play video games with her because she's here, you know. And he's just, for me, I always saw him as the sunshine of the movie. You know, he's always he's super positive. He's very self-confident. He has nothing to prove. And, um, and, and that's why I like him. That's why, by the way, he was the easiest character to write for me. And um, so at the end, I don't think that the reason why he gets eaten is because there was something with the older sister. The reason why he gets eaten is just because the older sister is an animal. She is an animal. No, but you know, it's true. It's at the center of my movie. It's the relationship there is in... Sorry, I can't... Can I finish my sentence? And then we, we will give you... Yeah. 
You know, I feel that, yeah, maybe you have a very strong reaction to the movie, which is good. I mean, it's better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, cheers. And, um, yeah, kind of got used to this. It's been a year. And, uh, <laughs> maybe we can talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, later, absolutely. <laughs> Jesus. And the thing is that, yeah... Um, the thing is that this is the whole point is that the, um, um, Alexia represents the animality inside Justine and she's like her dark shadow. She's what she could be and what she does not want to be because the, 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 the journey of Justine is an ascending journey towards humanity whereas Alexia's journey is a descending journey towards animality more and more, you know. And the thing is that the reason why she eats him is because she can and because she's hungry, like any animals. You're hungry, you eat. And so you don't care whether you kill or not, you just eat. And that's why I did these like close-ups on the key and on the, you know, on the, the keyhole after, because she's like, she wants to, she knows that her sister is like that, but she doesn't want to believe it because it's her sister, you know, and she wants to see the best in her. So in the end, she doesn't, and she should have, obviously. So that's why, you know, he's just like, somehow a sacrificial hero in the end and that's why he's tragic to me and that's why I really cherish his character is because he always, he wants to see the best in everyone and it's kind of his, um, yeah, it's kind of his to his own loss, you know. Mm -hmm. And Garans, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, you're, uh, the, the character of Justine goes through many uh, physical transformations in the film, She's, but it's very subtle. Um, how did you prepare to play the character and, um, you know, bring things to create that subtlety? Um, bah, on a beaucoup uh, parlé justement de, de son évolution en amont pendant, pendant plus d'un an. Actually, oh. we talked a lot about her evolution for over a year before we shot. Et, euh, et ensuite, on a vraiment travaillé sur euh, le corps et la manière de se tenir et du coup de se mouvoir euh, dans l'espace qui évolue énormément euh, dans le film. Et puis, nous avons travaillé beaucoup sur le corps et la manière de se mouvoir dans l'espace et la manière de se mouvoir dans l'espace, qui se passe de nombreuses différentes façons dans le film. Donc, euh, c'était vraiment un travail sur l'animalité du personnage qui est, on, on, le, on le comparait souvent à la panthère euh, qui est vraiment tapie dans l'ombre au début et qui, au final, va se révéler, donc se redresser et être euh, humain à, à la fin. C'était vraiment un travail que nous avons fait sur the character. We often compared her to a panther that at the beginning is crouching in the darkness and at the end comes out and stands tall and reveals itself. And I guess you're, you're, um, you're very young, and so, sorry, <laughs> but um, how did you uh, sort of, the, the experience of going to college and, you know, sort of coming into one's own, um, did you draw on um, any films or literary works to sort of realize that, or was that just through conversations uh, with Julia? Um, bah c'est difficile à répondre parce que moi je suis en plein dedans en fait je suis euh, au lycée et l'année prochaine j'ai fini donc j'entre entre guillemets dans le monde adulte donc peut-être que j'ai pas assez de recul pour euh, m'identifier au personnage. It's hard to answer that question because actually I'm currently in high school I'll be going to university next year so I'm I'm really in the heart of all this and in a sense next year I'll be entering the adult world so it's very difficult for me to have distance and, and to really know how to identify to the, with the character. Um, et puis ensuite, c'est pas vraiment quelque chose sur lequel on a vraiment travaillé. Um, comme je l'ai dit juste avant, on s'est vraiment concentré sur sur um, sur la manière de faire parvenir des émotions grâce au corps et de et de montrer cette évolution du personnage. And actually, that's not really something that we really worked on. As I said earlier, what we really focused on is how to make emotions felt through the body and uh, how to show the evolution of the character through that. Et c'était le, le principal. That was the, the main part of our work. Okay. Um, and Julia, I guess you have a... 
you know, this is a very beautiful film and there's some very striking images. Uh, you know, some of them are shocking, some of them are just sort of, you know, the lighting, the way that light is used. Um, what came first? Was it these images or was it, again, sort of like thinking through these concepts and finding, sort of refining and honing down, um, you know, that perfect shocking image? Oh, no, 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 no. My aim was certainly not to be shocking. I think that provocation somehow is a bit shallow. That was not really my aim. I think it's a, it can be a bit gratuitous. Um, my first idea was to consider that cannibals are very often treated as they. They're often treated in movies as they come from outer space or as they are a horde of zombies, which I think is very ironic because some cannibals are human beings and they exist and they have always existed and they will always exist. And you can definitely see why it's a problem when you see the reaction that lady like, just had. I'm serious, I mean, the reason why we treat them as they is because we want to repress this part of humanity, we do not want to accept it, it's, and I understand why, it's a very hard part of humanity, it's hard to, to process the fact that when you watch someone, you would, I've never have, but, or if you watch, let's say, an interview of someone who did, who had uh, cannibal uh, behavior, he doesn't have three tentacles protruding from its ears, is a person and they look just like us, they are just like us. And I do think that no one, humans or societies, grows up by repressing stuff. I think we grow up by accepting stuff, even the darkest one. I think it's good to be in full possession of information in order to grow up and to be able to make moral, moral choices. It's only by experiencing her own monstrosity in a way, or her own dangerosity, or her own animality, that she can be confronted for the first time of her life to this choice, I can kill, but will I? And she won't. And this is exactly when in my movie she's born to humanity, for real. She's no longer a projection of her parents' desires. She's no longer this, like, you know, white, innocent figure that doesn't know shit about anything. It's her own choice that she doesn't do the, the same thing that her sister does. It's her own choice that she thinks that she can be something else and someone else. And that is for me, uh, that's the, s the center point of my movie. How can one discover her humanity through something like monstrosity or something that we would qualify as being monstrous um, otherwise, um, the, the main question behind all this and behind everything I do when I make movies is what is it to be human? What does it represent? What does it imply in us? And where do we find our humanity? Is it in our soul? Is it in our spirit? Is it in our body? If your body becomes autonomous at one point, for example, if you get a nasty rash like she gets in the movies, or if you lose a limb, are you the same person as you were before? Are you, where are you there, since your spirit cannot uh, dictate what your body is doing? So everything in this, in the physical metamorphosis and in the moral metamorphosis, is the question, what is it to be human? And this is what really uh, inspired me uh, to make this movie. Well, if that angry woman had stuck around, she could have learned that. Um. <laughs> I don't think she wanted to learn I don't that. I so either. <laughs> um, I guess, this, unfortunately, this will be our last question, but um, I guess, um, do you envision yourself continuing to work um, with, you know, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna necessarily put a label, a genre label on this, but would you continue to sort of explore similar themes of the body and monstrosity and, you know, things typically, let's say, associated with horror, or do you, for your, do you have ideas for your next project? Yes, of course, I appreciate, I'm writing my next project, by the way, right now. And um, this will be a feature that will be in French as well. And um, I appreciate the fact that you did not want to put a label on my movie because that was my whole point. My point is talking about metamorphosis and my point is talking about people on whom you can't put labels. These gray areas where we discover ourselves. And I wanted my movie to also be 
a metamorphosis. I wanted my movie to provoke many different uh, emotions throughout. You can laugh and cry and be scared and be disgusted and cry again and laugh again. Everything. Personally, as an audience, this is what I love in movies. I, lo I love to feel alive and I love to feel full at the end of a movie. So thank you for mentioning that. And of course, uh, I will uh, try to continue in the same tone, which is this crossover between comedy, drama, and body horror. Because after all, this is only my first feature, and I don't think that you can tackle and master your art in only one feature. It's not like that. I think I will need more than one than a lifetime to manage to um, make my own language more precise and more audible to people. So yeah, it's definitely gonna be in the same genre. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you so much. This is a thank you very treat. much.